Hi and welcome back to a new video here on my channel. Aros sent over some very interesting products which I unfortunately have to return after this video. Anyway, we have an Aros TRX40 board, which we already reviewed a few videos back. We have a 3960X AMD CPU, which is great because I already deleted, deleted mine, which is also good. Because in today's video, we're quickly going to test how it would look like if we would direct die mount this AIO onto the CPU, because I always was a little bit worried mounting an AIO with this sized cold plate directly onto an AMD 30 bit CPU with the third generation. Because previously, before I deleted one of those chips, I was not really sure where the hotspot would be located on one of those chips. But um, because we already deleted one of them, we can just make a quick test, do an uh, application of thermal paste on the CPU, see how it looks like on the cold plate. Then we will eventually mount this AIO and everything together and we'll do a more detailed analysis and some testing of the FI27Q monitor, which Aros also sent over. That's a very interesting monitor, has a ton of features. And that's what we're going to check out today. First of all, we're going to open the socket. And then we have this 3960X. It's the identical CPU that Gigabyte sent over which is perfect, so we can do the test first. Placing the CPU inside the socket. Now we can mount the AIO or press it down. I'm going to apply some thermal paste onto the chiplets and the IO die just to see where those will be eventually located on the cold plate of the AIO. Now we're quickly going to try to press this down as much in the center as possible. Looks to be pretty much in the center. Now carefully trying to remove the CPU. Now comparing the cold plate of the AIO with the IHS size of this AMD Ryzen 30 CPU, it looks pretty much okay. I mean, um, it's covering the whole cold plate uh, itself all the necessary parts of the chiplets and also I.O. die are completely covered by the cold plate and if we just compare the CPU with the cold plate itself we all know that the CPU is much bigger and a lot of people were worried or asked me hey Roman it doesn't cover the full IHS will it be negative for temperature but looking at this I think it should be fine. Now that we covered the cold plate versus IHS size part, just to see where the dice would be located, we're going to sample the system and then go over to monitor testing and uh, we will probably do a quick comparison in between uh, of the 36, uh, 360 AIO versus uh, air cooling unit that's covering the full, a full IHS. And because we know that the cold plate has a smaller surface area than the IHS, it certainly makes more sense to apply the thermal paste on here instead of the IHS directly. All right, that's the monitor we're going to talk about today. It's the FI27Q. It's the direct successor of the AD27QD. Always a great sign if there are instructions already how to unpackage the product. 
By the way, the easiest and best way for assembly is usually to just keep the monitor in the box, therefore you pre prevent any kind of scratches on the screen. Then just take the monitor stand and clip it in here. If you decide to mount it on a wall, you can also do that. It has four screws that allow mounting on the wall. Monitor is assembled, you can see you can move it in all kind of directions. Like this. You can also rotate it and if we rotate it, you can directly see something I really like is it's an integrated PSU. We don't have those annoying external PSUs, that's something I really appreciate. Then we have the typical connections, we have audio connection, a microphone, we have 2 times HDMI. We have DisplayPort, DisplayPort 1.2, which means that we have 120 hertz with 10 bit color depth. And if you want to increase it to 165 hertz, you have to lower it to 8 bit color depth. And then we also have USB right here. We will check out some of the features in a bit and to navigate inside the menu of the monitor, there is such a small joystick on the bottom. As you can see, the AIO is still mounted and running. I'm currently finishing rendering one 4K video for YouTube. The typical test video I'm always using for, for my comparisons has been running for about six to seven minutes right now. And temperature wise, we were in the mid 70s and the peak was 83 degrees Celsius. Before we're going to talk about some of the features of this monitor, like you can enable a crosshair and stuff like that, we're talking about the specifications of this thing. It's the Aros FI27Q. It also exists as a QP version. There is only a very tiny difference. Uh, mainly the FI27Q is a successor of the AD27QD. And the AD27QD was a very, very successful and uh, well-known uh, gaming monitor for WQHD. And if you're maybe still looking for that one, that one is EOL. So in that case, you can just go for the FI27Q. And this one, as I said before, is a WQHD monitor, 2560 uh, x 1440p monitor, 165 hertz. And the 165 hertz only work with 8-bit color depth. If you want to use 10-bit color depth, then you have to adapt it to um, 120 hertz. That's mainly because this one is using DisplayPort 1.2. And then there's the FI27QP monitor and the P version also allows 165 hertz with 10-bit color depth. And that's mainly because this one is using DisplayPort 1.2 and the other one is using DisplayPort 1.4, therefore allows a higher bitrate, higher data transfer, and uh, that's the main difference between the Q and the QP version. I usually don't cover monitors that often, therefore I don't really have testing equipment for testing monitors. That's why I gave this one to a colleague who's also doing reviews uh, since like PC Games Hardware Extreme Area, that's like 10 years ago. And he's doing a lot of monitor testing and he tested the input lag of this thing for me. Um, he made something himself where he's basically using like a mouse and the mouse is attached to an LED and when he's clicking the button then he can record with the camera. Uh, when the click occurs and when the monitor is reacting. And he did 10 measurements and the average uh, response time or input lag was 12 milliseconds. That's what he told me. And from what I understand, that's a very good value. The FI27Q is an IPS panel, therefore viewing angles from the side from the bottom uh, is really good. Also uh, supports freezing and G-Sync and it's an HDR400 monitor. I enabled PUBG, as you can see obviously there is no crosshair right here. If we press in the center, then we get to the menu of the display, then we can go to Game Assist and here you can find the crosshair information. You can scroll down and select for example Style 1. And now we have uh, a crosshair right here where we didn't have anything before. Obviously it's just in the center of the monitor, but can be really useful especially if you're playing any kind of games that have like a hard, hardcore mode, therefore don't have a crosshair, can be really useful there. Quick look at the black equalizer. This feature is really kind of like cheating already. If we go to settings and then we go to gaming and black equalizer. This is probably the normal setting right here, something in this direction. And uh, now if we push this up, you can see it's lighting up basically all the darker spots and therefore making it much easier to spot people who are camping in uh, dark corners. Therefore, the black equalizer for gaming can be really, really helpful. You can see um, 
I'm also running uh, 165 Hertz right now and also running G-Sync. In settings there's also a bunch of other stuff you can uh, set, for example for picture you can set different types of uh, presets for example. Um, you can see how the, co uh, the color and like brightness and stuff is changing. For me personally Auros was uh, a very nice preset. Obviously you can also change other stuff such as R RGB if you go down there. Uh, you can change RGB LED because also this display does have RGB if that's important for you. To me personally, RGB on a monitor really, yeah, I don't get it. It doesn't really do anything for me because I don't see it, right? It's on the back side of the monitor. Why would I use this? And then there's also the dashboard. So if you go to the settings and to the left, then you have this dash dashboard where you can display CPU temperature, frequency and all kind of stuff directly from the monitor on here. But that's something I personally don't enable while gaming because it would just take up too much space and therefore be annoying to me. So much about the quick look with the FI27Q. Uh, to me personally, a good monitor, obviously, I'm just speaking subjectively. I cannot do objective measure measurement because I'm missing the devices to do stuff like real um, illumination uh, measurements and stuff like that. But I did a, the monitor test online where you can uh, take a look at different curves and uh, different colors and everything. I didn't spot that pixels, therefore a uh, monitor looks good to me. And I can definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a WQHD gaming monitor with high refresh rates, so 165 hertz, 8-bit uh, color, or 120 uh, or 120 hertz with 10-bit uh, color. Uh, I can absolutely recommend this one as a successor for the AD27QD monitor from Auros. Now we're also quickly going to test uh, the Auros liquid cooler. Um, I'm just going to run. Adobe Premiere for about 10 minutes so we have some render load, uh, see what kind of real uh, world performance uh, temperatures we can expect from this and then going to mount this Noctua cooler so we can get a comparison. Mounted the Noctua fan should be the NH14 with 2x 120 mm fans running at full fan speed right now. Same scenario, temperatures are pretty much equal, 83 degrees Celsius max, while during the rendering we are in the mid 70s. Obviously don't forget that in a usual PC you would have also the influence that the AIO could intake cold air from the outside because you can mount it directly on, I don't know, the top of the case, while the air cooler still has to process like the warm air that's inside the case from also your GPU, I think they will probably have about the same performance. Um, maybe if you can do the cold air intake, then the AIO should probably have low temperatures, but still 24 core, 30 per. If you really want to do serious overclocking, you have to get a custom water cooling. There's no way around cooling 24 cores. Thanks for joining in into this quick video. See you next time.